Welcome to Options Income Blueprint, and this is the Options Income Weekly Update on February 13, 2023. I'm Michael Schulman. A reminder, of course, as you know, uh, unless you just dropped in over the weekend, uh, and thank you for dropping in over the weekend. Uh, our next trading session is tomorrow at 11 Eastern. Uh, I'm going to go over trades and results from last week, and I, we were perfectly on target last week, um, and I'm going to explain a little bit about tactics managing all our positions and how we did it. More importantly, much more importantly, I want to talk about managing a position and not a trade. Um, many people especially knew that we, you guys come in, appreciate your business, you don't look at training, uh, you say, I'll look at training when I need to, and the training part's really important, not for the tactics, we, you can easily follow an alert, but for understanding that I open trade manage close positions and not individual trades and it's a very important distinction uh, last week we had two closed trades and they were uh, relatively new starbucks had been put on the previous friday block had been put on in our trading session and uh the returns were not the 0.5 percent that we target but i'm looking at all the positions that we opened during the week and i'm looking at all the roles in, in in the weekend, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you'll see that we hit our number when you put all those together. Uh, so there were three new trades, Block, Toll Brothers, and the XBI, which is an ETF for, for Biopharma. And you can see very, very high uh, potential returns or returns of when we close them, and, and then two rolls. And the returns on the rolls were very high. Um, uh, and and the, the purpose of the four core positions, General Motors, Pfizer, Marvel Technology, and Bank of America, are to generate cash. So if you're new and you're going to the website and you're seeing that they're underwater, that's from a year and a half ago or whatever. And I think, I can't prove this, but many people who've come into the trades and done the second leg of these roles have made a lot of money. They're designed, they're in the service, not as part of a constant portfolio that we are trading them. We don't measure it that way, but to throw off cash every single week. And that's what we do measure is how much cash in a given week are we returning and what's the rate of return on the capital that we've put in place. So that's what I'm saying. The goal was 26% in terms of a cash rate of return, not a, not a portfolio measurement, a measurement of how much cash did we generate divided into how much capital did we use, and it worked out very well. So the overall performance, you can see the new trades were fairly aggressive. It's a very high rate of return for new trades, and, and the roll trades were, were, um, were rolling now. Uh, two, two, we're doing rolls for two weeks and alternating between uh, let's say two this week and then two next week, and that, that keeps that cash like water coming out of a spigot coming in. This is all against the backdrop of a tough week uh, for traders on Wall Street. Um, there were more earnings, there was more uncertainty, but actually there was less volatility. And uh, I believe the combination of all that, we've, we've entered a stock picker's market, which is my dream. I'm a stock picker. We trade, but the heart of what we do is my stock picking. The heart is not charts, it's not chains, it's not formula, it's is... Bank of America undervalued? Is Pfizer undervalued? And so forth and so on. And um, the market has the Fed wrong. And I, I'm going to say this probably every week. Um, uh, this is not going to have an impact, I believe, this quarter unless the language changes in the Fed announcement in March. Um, efficiency is being rewarded. I'm going to get back to the Fed in a minute. Efficiency is being rewarded. So megatechs all missed in terms of revenue, but they all said we're going to shrink and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And the stocks did all right. And growth is being rewarded for most other names. So this is what I mean. We're going in, into an era of stock picking. Now, the reason I believe the Fed is the market wrong, they're not cutting rates this year. And a lot of the market, based on how the bond market's behaving, believe that they will. And, and there's going to be either a slow motion, negative reaction, as announcement after announcement shows no indication from the Fed that they're going to cut rates, or something sudden in, in a, uh, in a um, announcement that says, uh, the market is expecting this and we're not going to do it. So um, I want to talk about Devon Energy. It's a position we've been in since January. Uh, oil prices rose 2% after Russia said it cut output by half a million barrels a day. The issue with us is that Devon is a domestic fracker. And depending, and they're the, one of the only frackers that's expanding the amount of wellheads, that, meaning the amount of new wells. And the way fracking works, it's not like you drilling a well at the last 20 years. It's a field that you may work for 20 years, but you're, you're doing horizontal drilling and you're moving every six months within that field. 
And uh, so we entered the trade in the belief that the COVID lockdowns would help world oil prices as well as the ongoing problems, problems, butchery going on in, in uh, Ukraine. This was mitigated, offset, um, made to be false uh, because of unusually warm weather in Europe and to a certain extent, forget the polar vortex for a minute in the United States. And this really suppressed demand for both natural gas and oil. Earnings come out tomorrow, which means we'll be exiting the position today. Um, so this is what it looks like. We sold more up there, and you're going, great timing, Michael. This was just fabulous timing. But I think I just explained the kind of timing, and it was it was a, it was more than a one-week trade. We generated an enormous amount of cash, $117 per contract. And then uh, when it was too deep in the money, we accepted shares, anticipating we would sell calls. Um, and this is the question. We don't deal with this. This is not our game. We're not going to be in the position during earnings. This is a conservative income and cash generation focused service. It's not a speculative service. Other than a handful of companies in the S&P 500, you're always speculating if you hold a position going into earning that is not hedged. Um, and that's what I mean this is a position. Um, we're gonna sell shares today. Uh, this will give us a cost basis. We have a cost basis now, 63.83. Um, and we're gonna re-enter the position after earnings. Um, this reduces our risk. We'll have a net debit. We're going to be able to capture very large premiums because right now the option chains have fat premiums because of earnings coming out. So you take advantage of earnings, as I've done in previous updates, after earnings come out and the volatility, and therefore the premium is still there. Um, so look for an alert about debit one to two days after the announcement. And, and the reason I'm emphasizing this today is I received, not last week, but the week before, three emails, and it was about Pfizer, um, Maybe it's two weeks ago. I don't want to close the trade as you're recommending because I don't want to book a loss. You don't let your tracking system, it's the tail wagging the dog. We re entered Pfizer a couple of days after earnings, which is what we're going to do with Devin. You don't, you don't worry about some red in your spreadsheet or your broker statement. That's not the way you manage a position unless you've decided to close Pfizer and then you estimate, should I close at this kind of a loss? And you reevaluate the company and the stock. So position is multiple trades. Uh, I didn't enter Devin anticipating this, but this is what we do because you should not close a position with anything other than a small loss, break even, or a profit. And I mean small, small loss. If you like the company, now sometimes, and we may close Devin with a small loss because 65 is not providing itself as a floor, it's providing itself as a short term ceiling. That for me says, well, if we can book a loss of 30 cents, we, we you know we spend a dollar 30 or a dollar 40 or a dollar 50 to buy it back. We have a dollar 17 in cash. Maybe it's time to move on until there's more stability in the oil market, and that's something we'll decide later on. Uh, so trading this week to that point, we have that Devon alert. The market is is settling in with a, an undercurrent of a bullish tone, um, which is related to a, a misunderstanding of the Fed. B oh wow, we may get a statistical recession, but consumers are really spending and um, uh, the S&P 500 has found short-term support at 4,000, and how are the uh, stocks going to respond to the CPI report tomorrow, which can be important. I think they're expecting it will continue to trend down, so we will see um, what's going to happen. Last thing is, for brand new members, we, we manage every single I manage, Emily and I, every single position, and it's you never are left hanging, so to speak. Um, one of the things uh, I've been harping on is you should really consider coming to Investors Blueprint Live in Las Vegas. For us, it's it's a it's a, an event that's as important to you as it is to us. We learn a lot, we listen a lot, we say hello a lot. There are people who've been coming that I'm I feel like I'm friends with because I, I've known them for ten or eleven years. We're going to do the basics of generating weekly income, but this isn't about just tactics. This is how do you translate your personal goal. What do I want to do for the next 12 months? How do you translate into a trade? It's a process. Second, finding stocks to trade for income. There'll be two groups of 10 uh, that you will break out into sessions and decide of those. How do you put them together to come up with a bullpen of 10? Plus, I'm doing three case studies of stocks I've never done case studies on before. So in a certain sense, on day two, we'll be discussing 23 companies. From those two groups of 10, and you're winnowing it down to 10, you guys doing it. Uh, and then three, uh, we'll pick three to trade on uh, on the following day with an in-depth discussion of how we arrived there. And to the point about finding stocks, I was in Costco this weekend at Super Bowl weekend, 
I went to get my weekend, I don't do it every weekend, to get my hot, my $1.50 hot dog, and a Diet Pepsi, it's too bad it's Pepsi and not Coke. I gave up, I, I just walked in and I started to laugh, there were 30, got to be at least 30 people in line for the kiosks and ordering the hot dog. And the hot dog is really important to Costco's brand, and I'm going to go through that in the case study, how's a $1.50 hot dog important to a zillion dollar company, you'll see. So um, I think it'll be fun and I think you should join us. This is Michael Shulman. Thanks for listening.